Hi kids, it's Mrs. Friedel. How are you? I'm fine. Today is Wednesday, May 6th, and welcome to the first day of talking about fish. Um, actually, it'll be our only day talking about fish. Normally, if we were in the classroom, the um, unit on fish or talking about fish would take us two weeks. We don't have that kind of time. So I'm going to quickly today just run through the basics of ichthyology. What is a fish and what are the two groups of fishes? Um, make sure that you got the plankton stuff done from uh, that I posted on Monday. Everything for this week is due Sunday night, the 20th. I'm sorry, May 10th. I know what day it is. Sure. Uh, all right, let's get on with fish, shall we? Now remember, we're going to talk about, the unit we're talking about right now is the pelagic environment, the open ocean, which is full of fish. There's a lot of fish. Uh, however, um, some of the, the examples that I will show you and that I will talk about and that will be in the other videos are fish that live in other environments as well, coral reefs and kelp forests. Um, so this is just really all about fish. All right, so basic things about fishes. Marine fish are vertebrate animals. That means uh, they have an internal skeleton and a backbone. The Some fish have a, a, that skeleton made of cartilage, other of bone. Um, about 58% of the known fish species are marine species. And remember, we are only talking about marine species, not freshwater. So when you do your assignment for this, don't, don't, please don't pull up things like uh, trout or um, a chub or a goldfish. Those are freshwater. I want you to focus on ocean fish, okay? Uh, fish are the oldest and simplest of the vertebrates. We all descended from an animal like a fish and they are the largest group of vertebrates because they've been around the longest, about 350 million years if I remember correctly, okay? Uh, so what is a fish? If you find an organism and it has these one, two, three, four, five, six things, uh, you can call it a fish. All fish have gills that they use for respiration. Their bodies are covered with scales. Those prevent their, those protect their um, skin and also help them maintain some hydrodynamic action so they can swim better, helps the water flow over their body. They have fins for in, fins instead of limbs. That's what they use for movement and stability. Of course, fish live in water. They are ectothermic or cold-blooded. All that means is that they match the temperature of their environment to function. Okay? And they have, of course, that internal endoskeleton. By the way, if you're not, you should pause this right now and go open the note guide because you should be filling in the note guide as you're watching this. I meant to mention that earlier. Go do it right now. I'll wait. Okay, back? Are you back? Okay. Types of marine fishes. There are three groups. We're going to talk about two of them. We're going to talk about chondrichthian fish and osteichthian fish. Okay. First, cartilaginous fishes. This is a big group, a very old group of fish that's been around many of them pretty unchanged for a few hundred million years. These are sharks, rays, skates, and rat fishes, which is a terrible name for very pretty fish for the most part. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, so what makes a cartilaginous fish cartilaginous or chondrichthys, chondrichthian? These guys, their skeleton is made of cartilage. And if you don't know what that is, go ahead and grab your ears and flap them. Your ears are made of cartilage. So these fish, their whole skeleton is made from the same squishy material in your ear at the end of your nose, except for their jaws and their teeth. These guys always have a heterocircle tail. What is that? Hetero means different. So on these guys, when you look at their tails, they have their um, vertebrae, the backbone goes through the center of the fleshy part of their tail, and then they have this fleshy propulsive fin. That's called their caudal fin. And these guys, the top lobe and the bottom lobe are different sizes, and I'll show you how that's different on bony fish. Okay? These guys, their mouth is always ventral. That means their mouth is on the bottom of their face. They have placoid scales. That's a type of scale that's like tiny, tiny teeth. They have fleshy, non-articulated fins for the most part, meaning they don't really have a shoulder joint and their fins are really thick and fleshy. 
They have five to seven gill slits that open directly on the water with no covering. They have a structure called spiracles. Spiracles are little tiny holes in their head, usually above their eyes or behind their eyes, that pull water through their skull over their gills for respiration and also for smell, some chemosensory stuff. And these guys have, um, you can tell the difference between males and females in this group because males have an extra set of fins called claspers. And the these guys um, achieve buoyancy and buoyancy is maintaining your position vertically in the water column, okay? We do that generally by treading water, right? Uh, these guys are aided in that by having tissues and a liver that's infused with oil and the oil is less dense than the water, so they float. Okay, here's what we're talking about. Look at these cuties. Um, this is a pelagic stingray. I took this picture at our aquarium, so you should go visit her. She's huge and adorable and loves to flappy flap on the glass. And then, of course, the white shark. Sometimes they're called the great white shark, but really, they're not all that great. So they're just called a white shark. And, of course, ratfish, um, if you don't know what they are, you can Google chimera and... They're pretty. They're really pretty. I have one at school I wanted to share with you guys. Oh, anywho. Uh, other cartilaginous fish, not all of them are big scary sharks with teeth. There are quite a few sharks that are filter feeders. There are some scary sharks. There are. But these two are some of the examples of filter feeding fish, a mega mouth shark and a whale shark. And a whale shark is the largest fish that has ever lived. And they both eat plankton. They swim through the water, mouth open, whatever goes in is filtered and then swallowed. They have tiny throats and so uh, you couldn't be swallowed by a whale shark. They wouldn't want to. And they're both very gentle, docile animals that want nothing to do with people. And then of course the technical name for a ray is a majestic sea flat flap. This video right here I'm not kidding. It's my favorite video ever in the world. Go watch it. And I will link this one as well. There's stuff on your note guides to fill in from both those videos. Okay. Um, just a quick note on sharks. Sharks are awesome. They um, are a keystone species, all of them. All of the species of sharks are keystones in their environment and we are decimating them right now. Um, please go watch this video. All right, bony fish, the other big type of fish. Osteichthyes. Look at that word. Osteichthyes. These are fish that have a skeleton composed of bone. Their tails are homocircle, so they've got the fleshy um, middle bit where their backbone is, and then they have two lobes that are generally the same size. Not always, but mostly the same size. Um, they have non-fleshy fins. Ooh, I can talk non-fleshy fins that um, are articulated and those are the precursors to terrestrial arms and legs. Uh, they have a bony operculum, oh sorry, skip the scales. They have flat bony scales. These are called tenoid or cycloid scales. They have a structure called an operculum which is this door over their gills. So their gills aren't open directly to their wa to the water. And what those also do besides protecting the delicate gill structure is they are hinged. So when the fish opens and closes its mouth, which you guys have all seen, right? They're mwah, 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 mwah. As they're doing that, it's also flapping their opercula open and closed and helping pull flush fresh water over their gills. These guys, uh, for buoyancy, they use an organ called a swim bladder, which is a, it's a balloon. It's a balloon in their back. Um, and they have a lateral line for sensory information. So they have, if you look at a, a fish and you look along its side, they usually have this line of little pits that goes down their side. Those are sensory. They can sense um, movement in the water and pressure that changes in the water. They can tell who's around them, basically. All right, here's some examples of pelagic fish. This is a Pacific sunfish. Mola mola are weird, you guys, but they're also kind of awesome. This is a porcupine puffer fish. Now, yeah, they, they're not super pelagic. They stay kind of close to the coasts, but oh, cats, they're cute, you guys. I love puffer fish, like, as a group. And then also um, tuna, pelagic fish, they're kind of like the default setting. They're also huge. They're also um, really valuable and really fast and they're pretty great predators. You guys saw that when you researched open ocean predators, right? Whew, okay. Now here are some more examples. These are some of my favorite fish and they are not pelagic fish. These are reef and kelp forest fish, but longhorn cowfish, oh my god, they're cute. Filefish, so pretty colorful. And then this is a synathan, 
um, also known as a seahorse. They're kind of like the epitome of weird in the fish, but they're great. Uh, this is my favorite fish of all time, forever. The end, Mandarin Dragonette. I love them. And then this is a humphead, huge fish that is a keystone species in the kelp forest. Uh, and then this video, I will also link on how, it's it's how to take sen fish senses. Um, I think, yeah, go, sure, go watch it. What's up? So, ooh. Okay, so here's a comparison again, just overview between the two groups of fish. Um, sharks and other chondrichthians, fleshy fins, okay? A male would have a um, extra clasper right there. Their tail is heterocircal. That means that top lobe is bigger. They have open gill slits. They have that spiracle to pull water through their skull and their mouth is on the bottom of their face. Yeesh, I got a clicky finger today. I'm so sorry. Versus bony fish, these guys have these fins that are articulated and non-fleshy. They have bony rays going through them. They have a homocircle tail. They have tenoid or placoid bony scales. I don't know if I showed you these placoid scales. They look like teeth. Um, on the bony fish, they do not. Uh, they have this opercula or operculum that covers their gills and their mouth is usually at the end of their face. There is, of course, some diversity. There's a lot of diversity. Some of them have it a little lower, some a little higher. Okay, I'm going to end this now and um, your assignment I'm going to explain on another video with the assignment because I'm going to run out of time in this video. So go watch the video for how to do the assignment and um, if you have any questions, ping me and or come drop into the Google Meet and uh, I hope you guys are all doing well. Stay safe, stay healthy, uh, stay home, just, just follow the rules. Okay, I'll talk to you later.